Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, can you hear us? Welcome to Streaming with the Stars, presented by CrimsonHead.com. Hi, you've got myself, George Trevor, and of course, joining me as well from the Crimson Head team, we've got the Oracle Dragon. Hi everyone, welcome to be here. Hey Oracle, thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know, guys, in the chat if you can hear us, if the, uh, if the audio is all okay. And of course, our superhero streamer, who we wouldn't be here without. Uh, wow, some very cool rocking pink hair there. Uh, Batgirl, we've got, of course, with us Batgirl. Hey guys, welcome in. But without further ado, I really should move on and introduce our very special guest. Uh, you know him as the original Brad Vickers. We have with us, of course, for streaming with the stars, our very special guest today is Evan Saber. Woo! Yeah! Hey, hold on a second. I just landed, guys. I just landed. <clears throat> Mama. I can't even remember where I was flying. How's everyone doing? Yeah. 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 I'm in my flight gear. Hold on a second. Um, I'm going to take this off. He'll be. So. Uh, I know he's he's out there. Whoa. <laughs> hey. Hey. Look out. Here go. Captain Saber. It's up. Uh, it's Saba. It's Saba. Hey, George. Evan Saba, thank you so much for joining You're us. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. You're welcome. Here I am. Back from the dead. <laughs> Crazy. Can you all hear me? Am I clipping in? Am I hearing you perfectly well. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. How was your day? How are you? I'm great. Uh, you know, uh, I hope everyone has joined the stream on time because uh, I, I think I messed up on the um, on the whole time zone thing. So apologize for that. I apologize for hitting my table there too because my camera moves every time I do that. Look, see that? Miserable. <laughs> Hey, listen, we're, we're, we're just delighted that, that, that you could be with us. Um, we've already got so many Resident Evil fans in the chat uh, saying hi. There's uh, Distant Memories saying the man, the myth, the legend is with us. Everyone's so happy, so happy to, to uh, see you with us today. Evan, and of course, we'll be passing on to you the questions that your fans have. Okay. Well, you know, I'm here. I'm ready to, to answer them um, like a Hollywood star would answer any question. Uh, superb uh, overlay as usual. Thank you, Batgirl. Batgirl, as you can see, is streaming the very beautiful looking HD remastered version uh, of the original game uh, that you starred so eloquently in. And uh, I don't think, have you, were you, are you familiar with this HD remaster, Evan? It's the first time I ever saw it. Oh, look at, look at Jill. She looks gorgeous in HD. Hey? I don't remember, like, that was a fresh cut. She got a fresh haircut in that one. Because <laughs> in the original, she had long hair. Did she? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, she had, she had time to go against the salon in between zombie stuff. It's okay. I haven't been to the salon either. I need to go to the salon and get my hair covered. This is a COVID. This is, a, this is the COVID thing, right? Like, all the hairdressers were closed. And then I was just about to cut it, but I just booked another gig. I got to shoot a gig in October, and they wanted me to be a sketchy dude in a in a clinic. So I think they want my long hair, so I can't cut it. Right. Well, I can see in the background there we've got the game starting. Batgirl, do you want to go uh, on the sound? My voice is already in this scene. My voice is in here. See all this Oh, stuff? is it as one of the zombies? Yeah. You guys don't know. I'm one of these guys. Ooh. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. You might be able to. I'm trying to be somebody else. But I'm like one of the, I'm like a few of the soldiers who stream. Yeah, that. Yeah, I remember losing one of my boys for this team here. Yeah, these guys. This is a great opening scene. The, yeah, these yeah. scenes are fantastic. And the fact is, nobody knows, but I'm I'm actually already in the opening scene because I do several of these the soldiers' voices. And this is why we love interviewing you guys because you can point out stuff nobody knew. That's so fun. awesome! I got twice in this game. I think that was me dying too. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Who else has died twice in a game? Nobody. Just me. And by the way, I've got a good record of dying because I die a lot. I die in other things I do. I've died in a lot of TV shows. I'm a dyer. Crazy. Well, you didn't die in your perfume commercial. No. No. I was dancing and spinning around with Alanis Morissette doing my Leslie Nielsen impersonation. Yeah. That was fun. Alanis and me in Rome for a week filming her crazy video. Ah. And I didn't even show you the whole video yet. Did anybody hunt it down? No one knows what it's called. Ooh. Yeah. Now you get everybody wanting to know now. Well, I, maybe I'll tell you at the end of the stream so that I don't get harassed with it. Oh my god. Get away, Jill! Yeah, this looks great. This looks awesome. I mean, um... So, of course, voicing I... Jill, we've got Catherine Disher. Now, I don't think... You, you wouldn't have met Catherine on the day because you didn't do any kind of recording together, did you? I imagine it was all in no, separate I, sound I booths. I don't think anybody did any recording together, to be honest. I think it was just one at a time with the uh, English-speaking casting director that was in Canada and then the two um, Japanese gentlemen who were the directors, and they, they, guys, they had to make... <laughs> it was confusing as all heck because like, they couldn't speak English almost at all and um she okay. couldn't speak japanese We've got to get out of here. so they just everyone was in the room trying to communicate with each other trying to figure out what they wanted to come out of it <laughs> so it's pretty funny i'm sorry about your daughter but there isn't going to be any uh. rescue we have to get out of here do you want a question or do you want to wait till later oh I don't know. Um, does anybody want to ask me a question? Like, is there questions to be asked already? I'm watching the game. So. Well, should we wait for this fantastic, iconic scene with Dario Rosso? I, was that the right move? No. Locking yourself up in there? Did, did he live? No. No? <laughs> I can't remember now. Like, yeah. It's been 22 years since I've played this game. But that's the thing you mentioned it was so very long ago but this this game just is so beloved and and, and just li lives just so so long in our hearts and and i mean for me it's up there is one of my most favorite i said this before i'm not just saying this one of my most favorite resident evil games i think it takes everything that's great about resident evil 2 and improves upon it i love the atmosphere i love i think the the across the cast the set the sound um the sound design but also i think the performances from the cast uh the whole cast are fantastic yeah, it, it, um, I think it was kind of like an evolution in terms of like how they were directing our, our um, acting. I don't know, because it, even though I always had the feeling that it was a little campy, right, overperformed in a lot of ways, um, you really couldn't escape it. That's kind of what they wanted. They wanted it to be overly dramatic, almost, um, I guess, cheesy. I don't know. But... Uh, they, they didn't want our, our performances to be subtle. You know, they always were asking for more. more. But we're going to come for it soon. But that's what I love about... Sorry. That's what I love about your performances. You can really hear the terror in your voice when you're vo you know when you're when you're warning jill of this this impending doom that you know that's been stalking you across the city and I, I, it's absolutely fantastic it's really quite gripping i didn't know i really don't even remember if i was told any information as to like i'm being pursued someone's trying to kill me and i'm running away i don't remember a lot of that stuff uh i, I do recall that they just wanted certain levels of performance and uh and so that's why I would always be screaming my face off. Just screaming. Yeah, because your performance as Brad, when you were like, finally meeting Jill, yeah. it was just perfect. Because you had the perfect balance of terror, exhaustion, frustration, and then your scream of pure terror was spot on. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I actually can't even remember how many times I did it. Like, it was, it was probably quite a few times. They didn't let, they didn't let us go very quickly back then and I just remember recording lines for maybe a couple of hours in the booth so it was a, it was a good amount of work and um, like I don't really think I had a lot of a ton of lines but I, I do recall that I had to recall uh, you know people do know this I had to lay down different different line tracks uh, and I guess that was for the situation of whether or not uh, you as a player Jill helps me or not because um, if you don't help me then I think Brad is just a little bit more 
you know. Oh yeah, hope, somebody you know. did share that video yeah. um, about how Brad reacts depending if you help him or not, because yeah, he gets I, angry if you don't, and then relaxes when you do. Yeah, I, kind I really of. thought that well, was a cool performance. Yeah, because that it was like the, the idea that they. I mean, it was like a very small text change. It wasn't really that much. It was mostly just a text change. Oh, um, he's about to show up. Oh, this is my door. Oh, here we go. The there I go. <laughs> <laughs> There he is. And he's off! <laughs> he's like, off the races. The you, you really slow that down, and then you watch Joe run. I run faster. <laughs> I, you do. Really, I run much faster than Jill. It gets very competitive amongst those stars members. We have a question for you, Evan, from Celtic Claire. Hi, Claire. Thank you for joining us. Uh, very supportive of all our streams. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Claire. Um, Celtic Claire asks, um, Evan, were you a fan of the Resident Evil series beforehand, or was this very much uh, a one-time gig? Uh, um, well, I mean, you guys know I'm a big nerd, right? So I've been playing video games, Claire, since uh, uh, video games came out. Which is kind of sad, actually. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, so I, I was playing video games ever since they came out in the arcades, at home, everywhere. And um, when, like, I, I, I bought, I remember going out and buying um, uh, the Jaguar, the Atari Jaguar, because I was like, I'm going to get myself a console with my own money. Oh, back. wow, and yeah. Like, yeah. And I was like, Atari Jaguar's just coming out great. I bought it, got it home, you know, I was playing, I was like, oh, this is crap. Uh, and, and not really enjoying it too much. And then I just walked by the store, and the, the PlayStation One had just come out. Yeah, the Jaguar and it, wasn't. It was in the store, yeah. and people were like, you know, it was like displaying things. And I saw the demo disc, and I saw like that dinosaur walking and everything. And I was just like, oh my <laughs> god, it's 3D! Like it's it's 3D. And and um and so I got into the I bought I just traded in the Jaguar. I bought my PlayStation One, and I saw so I was playing PlayStation One's games for a while. Uh, but when Resident Evil One came out. It kind of was a different game than all the other games that I've ever played. It, yeah. was, a, it was a whole new thing. Um, it was still, it was using the 3D engine, but um, there was a combination of action and some puzzles. So you know, if you were playing with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, there's a bit of something for all of you, right? The guys would just back yeah, kill things, and there were puzzles there were for the women who are always you know, better in the intellect department. They usually can help <laughs> solve the puzzles. So that's that's. I just thought it was an amazing game. My mind was blown when I saw Resident Evil One, and um, I was an instant fan. So there's your answer. Insta fan, me. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, like you say, that that was the feeling for me, and I'm sure for many other fans as well. And Oracle and, and Batgirl will say, um, have their part. Um, for me, it was like no other video game I'd played before. You know, yeah. very much used to 2D sprites and platforming games on the home yeah. computer, and, and that kind of era and i must say it's an honor to finally get to meet the one person that, that bought the atari jaguar evan uh wow yeah. <laughs> i think the only person that owned that thing i still have my intellivision <laughs> back here um look at that you guys have an intellivision no <laughs> right you play tron deadly discs no not as oh many. wow look at me I tell you right. so when i say i play video games it's been fun. oh wow yeah, that's some serious nerd tech there. Bloody yeah, hell. yeah. I mean, this 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 unit is probably older than some of you. Some of you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not wrong there. Majority uh, of the audience. <laughs> yeah, the majority. Of, no, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are here on on the stream who played the game when they were kids, right? Like I was. I don't know. I guess I was in my 20s when I recorded the lines. But some people were playing that when they were 10, 11, and now they're only 10 years <laughs> behind me. So they're in their 40s. They're in their 40s yeah. here, right? Yeah. Nostalgia. They're here for the nostalgia. Yeah. I'm really jealous. Batgirl and Oracle, they'll tell you their stories now. I'm really jealous because they, they played these games when they were very young. Yeah, I played it when I was like six or seven. That guy needs a muffin. <laughs> yeah, I played it when I was six or seven. Six or seven? I sat next to my dad and I kept copying everything he did on the controller because I, I, I learn better when I see so I was staring at my dad while he was doing things on RE1, and he just let me play one day. And yeah. I solved the puzzle that he was stuck on, and he's looking yeah. at me like, how did you do that? Yeah, see? <laughs> I'm not wrong. I'm not, like, trying to be sexist or anything, but just, just people, some women can generally, you know, figure out puzzles better than men for some reason. I don't know. I'm just I'm joking, generalizing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 
uh, everything about it I, I, I loved. And, um, and of, cor- I, of course, playing, playing as a, a female heroine in the game was, it was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're very. I think they were pretty far forward, Capcom, in terms of their representation of female characters, particularly at that time uh, in in video gaming history. Uh, You know, none of these kind of female protagonists. uh, Is 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 because there's a cutscene here. Oh, oh, no, thank you. The Brad cutscene. This is why. Oh, here we go. This is this is why I'm just like chilling in this hallway. Yeah. (laughs) No, I was just going to say the the, the female protagonists. They they don't rely on anyone in these games. You know, Jill. I mean, you know. Um, Carlos helps her out, but she's not yeah. necessarily reliant on him uh, no. to complete the mission. But here we go. We've we've got your scene coming up here, okay, Evan. Okay, my great iconic scene. Let's do it. Like, why am I not dead there? Get away. Well, well, I don't remember having a machine gun when I first entered this scene before when I played it. <laughs> Brad, hang in there. Why isn't someone doing something about this? I didn't know you were still alive, Jill. The police aren't trained for this kind of situation. What could they do? Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. He's after Star's members. There's no escape. You honestly got to give kudos to Brad because he survived in the city during a zombie outbreak and outrunning Nemesis yeah. this oh, entire time. I know, but I had something wrong there in that I said that we're both going to die. But we all know it's just me that dies. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> You're a self-confessed nerd. Were you aware this is coming uh, mentioned by Karkikified? Uh, who um, asked, were, were you aware of Zombified Brad in Resident Evil 2? Oh, yeah. uh, I can't remember if I, because uh, I think I've maybe played Resident Evil 2 as well when it came out, but I think a lot of these games, I, I'm not sure if I even remember finishing them because I, I just I kind of suck. Right. Yeah, Zombie Brad in Resident Evil 2 is very, very dangerous. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. What? I just see him like shuffling around. He just looks at you. Oh, you're very yeah. powerful. Trust me. Really? Yeah. And some people say it's the flak jacket, but I, I don't think so. I think it's <laughs> the virus is in me. Right? I've been infected a little bit. So now, why Zombie Brad if I'm killed by Nemesis in 2? Because I know that 2 and 3 are really weird, right? Is that because two happens in between one and three? Yep. No. Well, two happens in between three. Right, just three. Just three. They're kind of going on at the same time, but at different time periods. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, that's not confusing. So. <laughs> it's basically after you're killed, you revive as a zombie and go underneath a staircase and just wait. Wait, so ne- so when Nemesis kills me. You come I back as a zombie. Up- I just come back as a zombie? Yep. Miraculously, with your face intact, you'll be pleased to know. Well, just a few broken I, teeth. I'd still be writing cash <laughs> on. <laughs> You're going to need on. some dental work, but yeah, your face is generally not <laughs> smashed in. Kaboom. Those guys at the bottom have spinal problems. Like, they, they got a- Evan, um, we have a question for you from Bloody Eye. Hi, Bloody Eye. Thanks for being with us tonight. Bloody Eye says, were you aware that um, it was considered that Brad, not Carlos, would be the second playable character early on in production? Oh, um, I think I only recently ever heard about that. Um, yeah, that was part of the question I have. Yeah. <laughs> It basically says, in the original version of the script, it was supposed to be Brad and not Carlos that was going to be Jill's partner. Are you disappointed that they didn't get to be Jill's love interest? Uh, <laughs> love interest? You think Brad and Jill would be love interest? I mean, it's po- possible, but, you know, he's a greaser. I mean, his pompadour, you can tell he's a greaser. You don't you know, Jill's a little little preppy for him. I think, he's, I think he's more edgy. I don't know if Jill would be his taste. Do you know what I'm saying? He's a helicopter pilot, okay? Helicopter pilots like to go fast. Yeah. So he's like a sports bike or a very good yeah. fast sports car. Oh, 
Where's my Jesus nut? Hold on a second. Only one person knows what I'm talking <laughs> Oh. No, I You joke, but I imagine that's probably what Capcom... That might have been the thinking behind that oracle, that they wanted to have kind of like some suave, kind of, you know, ladies' man, as we all know Carlos is, you know, I mean, we can't... We all, all swoon. Oh, the ladies love my foxy oh, accent. Oh, swoon at that accent. Whereas, like you say, you know, <laughs> Brad's more of a grease monkey. Um, yeah. Perhaps that was the thinking, but... He's a fantastic character, and the fact that with the limited dialogue, he is, you know, we've got so many fans that are out to, to, to speak to you and see you tonight, Evan, and the fact that this character has l lived so long in our hearts, so beloved. Yeah, I don't understand. What's the deal? What, why is Brad Vickers uh, such a cult favorite? Like, I don't understand. He's an iconic character because everybody loves you. That's just it, because you're, you have a moment in this game, and everybody remembers you for it. You're the only person that outran Nemesis, and survive for a very long time, even after being infected, you still continue to fight. And I yeah. think yeah. there's and that it, feeling of redemption that a lot of the fans want to see. You know, there, oh, there never really seemed to be that animosity in the, the whole Chicken Heart thing. And with the remake, I mean, I, I, I think it's, I mean, it, it's, it, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as say universally agreed, but there are, let's just say there are many, many fans that whose hearts really are with the original as opposed to the remake but with the remake something that was popular was the fact that they did kind of look to redeem um brad's character and i mean he almost tries to do so in, in this original as well yeah but i've already redeemed myself when i dropped the rocket launcher i don't know true you know, yeah i don't know how much more redeeming i can do to then save your life right like i've already saved people's lives here right are you ready to see your death apparently oh it's my good time now Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just keep walking right I'm not ready for this. Oh, and by the way, should I go back? <laughs> no, no. Stay right there. I so what I'm, really what I was say is, um, I was going to ask a question to to all the fans and, and to all of you. Like I, I I know people do. Some people do like Resident Evil remake. But if, and I'm sure there's going to be a question to me. So I'm just going to say it to you right now. Is that what? What do you guys think? Which way? of Brad dying was more enjoyable to you. I like the original. Personally to me, I like I like my death the way I died. Not because it, I'm in it. <laughs> Not because of that, really. But uh, it's because I, I think that Nemesis, um, when he kills Brad li like that, it's uh, it's quite, quite menacing. And yeah. it, it would probably make the, the, the player... Um, even more discouraged into thinking that they could actually ever survive this guy, you know. And when you oh, trust you, me. Yeah, and killing Brad is like killing a dog, I guess, right? Because everyone is like really like, oh my god, stupid guy. He killed Brad instantly. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, and instantly, right? Like you know, he survived that long, and all it took was a tentacle in my my mouth. <laughs> yeah, everyone's saying the OG in the chat. G. OG. Yeah, all right. <laughs> because, because in the remake, Brad doesn't get killed by Nemesis, which no. pretty much makes looks like Brad doesn't get yeah. killed by Nemesis. Nemesis looks like he's a pansy. Yeah. Because he can't only, take out Brad. No, not really. No, I don't. I don't even know that. But what upsets me is that even uh, is it Carlos that kills me, the character in the game? Yeah. 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 And and what does character and what does he say before he shoots? Sorry. Him? No. My line. I th what's Brad says that. <laughs> what, you, what does Carlos say before he starts shooting uh, Brad? Um, well, oh, crap, I, for, I forget. Boy. Yeah, he, he says him. something like, I'm uh, going to kill you, fucker, or something like that, right? Something like that. Like, really I, don't have, I don't have time for cool. this. Listen, okay. I don't that's what time he says. Time? No, that's what he says. He's, he goes, and I think uh, afterwards he says, sorry, poster boy. Sorry, poster boy. He goes, sorry, poster boys, but at first he's like, I don't have time for this. Oh, Rico oh, says, says I, I got this effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I got this effort. And, and, and to me, that was an incredibly weakening moment, you know, script-wise and all that stuff, because uh, you're asking the player to now kill one of their teammates. And there was no... I, I don't know if it was the actor's performance because of the way that it was directed or written for them, but it just, it just seemed like there was no uh, compassion. Like no, no compassion. It was like now Brad is not Brad anymore. He's a thing, mm -hmm. and he was just treated like any of the other things. And uh, there's no compassion. Uh, you know, like when you put you know Old Yeller. That's a really, really old film. Though. Let me try another one. <laughs> but when you put down your dog, you're not putting it down like I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you, you fucker. 
Like, you're not going to kill your dog that way. You're not going to put it down that way back then. You're going to just go, I love you. I love you, Yeller. <laughs> Right. And I think what, what over almost what overshadowed it as well was the fact that it kind of answered for many fans the question of how did Marvin Branner uh, get his bite, which yeah it, we, you know we all wanted to know, and he's another very much beloved character, and it was great that we saw that almost that cameo from Marvin in yeah. in Resident Evil Three. But the fact was it you know that took that as I said it overshadowed and it kind of almost took Brad's moment away, and it kind of made it it made it all about Marvin and all of um, so. Whereas, you know, yeah, I so mean, we're, all, was... we're all in agreement. Everyone here on the stream is all in agreement. We all like Ad Dying originally at the hands of that that monster, right? Yeah. And that's what he is. We he was he was supposed to be the unbeatable and the most terrifying thing that we've ever come across. And when you kill when you kill a person like you know such a charming and intelligent and, and good looking guy like Brad, that you 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 feel bad. You feel upset. You feel really and terrified. You're terrified, right? I mean, we all wish Jill could run faster at that point. So, um, uh, good job, Capcom. It was a, really the game looks pretty and everything, but I, I just thought that that was um, something that was not thought well enough of. Yeah, no, and I he, think that. He, on, sorry, sorry, Oracle. As a performer, as a, somebody. Who, who One of the questions that. I was given was was pretty much basically saying, if you were, if somebody was able to mod Brad to replace of Carlos, would you lend your voice if paid for it? Yeah, well, if I was paid for it, absolutely. Um, well, that would that would be definitely something that would be possible. Look, I would I'd rather not do it um, for money, right? Because I'm just a fan, and I think it'd be hilarious and all that stuff. But I I have an agent, and I'm in a union, so it makes it makes things tricky that way. Um, and we touched on this earlier. Happy Smelly, hi, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Happy Smelly uh, from Australia was asking whether you. Uh, recorded separately or with your fellow cast members and, and you mentioned you know separately so separately, you did you yeah. not get to meet any of your cast members at all during the production i can't recall anybody so my that was like i was just so young and i don't recall them bringing us together or anything like that but um i think it's just that we were just in the room alone um and we just had we just basically got our scripts and just went through the lines and each line was like a work uh around and everything uh, one of my favorite things, I don't know if anyone else, well, nobody would know this. Nobody, like, nobody would know any of this. But when, my favorite thing is, is when the two Japanese uh, gentlemen, which I guess were, they were the directors of the dialogue, uh, they, they, they were trying to get me to make sounds that were uh, to do with damage. And I just remember them saying, the damage, the damage. They were showing me how to do it. But because I watched so many samurai movies when I was young and I played video games for so long, I yeah. knew exactly what they wanted in terms of like damage. And it's the damage that we get when the, the, the zombies get us, you know, like, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I remember Catherine was talking about that Catherine yes. Disher for Jill. Yeah. She was actually mentioning about having to make those sounds too. Yeah, the yeah well remembered, Oracle. Yeah, she, I, I, Catherine Disher, as we all know, who played uh, Jill Valentine, was in fact our very, very first interview. Cool. And um, she mentions that when she was asked to kind of recreate the, these damage and these these kind of I I noises of exertion, she was very mindful not to make stereotypical, you know, Japanese... Uh, you know, fighting, you know, noises like, you know, she didn't want to camp it up. She didn't want to go, kind of go to that, that, you know, those 70s kind of, uh, you know, Japanese um, fighting films. But when, so she kind of put it back to, to the voice director and said, well, look, you know, show me, you show me, what, what, what do you want? And she said, just well, down the line, one after the other, they all did these very, just like you say, these very stereotypical kind of traditional Japanese fighting noises. Uh, so she found that quite funny that, you know, she wanted to avoid that, but that's very much what they wanted. That's funny. I didn't want to avoid it. I, I, I leaned into it. Trust me. I was, I really, I wanted to be the best damager you could possibly be. And they get you to do that I think, at the very end of the project, don't they? So they don't want you to put your voice out at the beginning. No, 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 no. Like uh, the, the damage stuff came in afterwards. Like yeah, that was like yeah. the tail end of the, of the, of the recording session. Now, sure. Batgirl's very patiently been waiting with Jill outside yeah, no, the entrance getting the RPG. We're, uh, we're just running around. Right. We're trying we've to been avoid it. Evan, okay, I, you, we've been guys. stalling. We've, we've been, been stalling. stalling. I've seen it. Here's the best moment. Let's go. <laughs> Let's fear. <gasps> Death and taxes. Sorry, Evan. Uh, 
continuity is just a little off, right? Like, I remember the zombie was biting my left shoulder. Oh, no! Oh, like wet meat on the concrete. Go by a guy who can't even say anything more than one word. Your performance is just so beautiful oh, for this. Thank you. I appreciate it much. Your raw tear and it introduces to Nemesis. Look at that, face down. Oh no! I mean, that's a good point, Oracle. Yeah, it, it, it really is. I mean, at the very least, his death does serve as quite a, a shocking introduction to the, you know, to the raw damage that, that, that Nemesis is going to enact. Yeah, because he basically says he, he's coming for us. We don't know what he looks like or if we should be afraid, but as soon as he kills Brad, all of us, when we were young, start freaking out because, oh no, this is a monster that is going to stalk us. Right, that's right. And look right. at him, look at him, just get back up and ready to fight again. And the, and the speed of it, too, like, I didn't know he ran that bad. I can't this that. is, the, this, I think this is one of the hardest sections in the game. This, this, literally, this opening game. This, sorry, this opening section. Okay, I think is he back down now? Is he down for a little bit? He's down, right? brilliantly. Yeah, he's down for a little bit. He's down for a little bit, he'll be back. He has purple it's blood. A very, yeah. It's a very restricted area with which I mean I know you can w walk out into the other scene. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> All right, so that that's me dead, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you guys are you dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, come back here. Sorry. You can't take off yet. We got your no, keys. I, <laughs> I, have, I have keys. That's I that's guess. all, folks. Because we locked the house, the mansion. <laughs> Nice one, Oracle. I knew. It. Yeah, you, you didn't see it when you came in. Oracle just sleight of hand pinched your keys. Those are my helicopter keys. Oh, that no. door behind you, Evans, <laughs> locked. Not my helicopter keys. If I had my helicopter keys, I wouldn't be here. I threw away already and got a rocket launcher. You come back. Now, maybe not so much helicopters, but in real life, you're. Uh, often to be seen on boats and fishing but maybe not necessarily for what people in the chat might think you're fishing for would you like to tell us something about that Evan? um well it's a it's more like a pandemic uh i guess keeping yourself fresh situation um acting dried up when the pandemic hit productions stopped auditions kind of came to a dead still and um my friend and I, you know, been locked up, bored. I was watching YouTube and I came across magnet fishing. And magnet fishing is throwing very large, huge magnets into the water. And then you never know what you're going to be pulling out. Um, and then uh, we, we did it. We tested it out. It was pretty fun. And I said to my friend, oh, you know, we're a couple of sludge pirates. We're going to, you know, and he said, that'd be a good name for a show. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? I mean, he literally wanted to do a YouTube channel about magnet fishing like the ones we watched on, on YouTube. And so, uh, not that I really was into wanting to do that. I did understand, and we were talking about it, is that it would provide us an opportunity to keep ourselves on camera. And it would, it would also yeah. be a, a good exercise in um, being yourself because, you know, we all kind of have a difficult time at first looking into a camera and talking. Yeah, uh, and I thought it would be beneficial that way. And since then, we've been doing it for about a year and a half. And we go out to all the bodies of water in in Toronto, and a few places outside of Toronto, and we go around magnet fishing. And we try to find stuff that's in the water, cool stuff. I mean, obviously, we want cool things, but if you don't find cool things, you find garbage in the water. And it, it's um, it's another part of it is that you are an environment yeah. environmentalist because you're you're cleaning up the water. You're taking out uh, things that are covered in zebra mussels, which are invasive, and so you get them out of the water, it just kind of helps out the situation a tiny bit. Okay. But, and the um, channel's called Sludge Pirates, correct? Sludge Pirates. Yeah! Oracle is our queen of links. She'll put a link into the chat, Evan, so all, all, the, all your fans in the chat will see. Uh, Oracle will get some links to that. Uh, thank you, Oracle. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's uh, again, it's just a, a fun hobby uh, YouTube channel. For me and my friend, um, just go out and be silly and try to find some stuff. But we were in the news recently for that because um, about a month ago, 
maybe a little longer, maybe about a month and a little longer. Uh, we were just uh, down by the harbor here in Toronto, like at one of the older harbors. And there was usually a big, huge, tall ship that's uh, parked where we decided to magnifish that day. But it had been moved over because they, I guess they, the big tugboat that used to be there moved on. The big sailboat moved over to the left and we decided to throw our magnets in where underneath used to be underneath the tall ship. It was like a big tall ship with sails and stuff. And we pulled out four long rifles, guns. I don't know if anyone saw that. But yeah, we, it's on your channel. I can see it right now. Down. We pulled out five. Well, I, one of them was broken. We pulled out four complete, uh, some of them pretty old rifles. I think mine was a Remington Model 8. And my other friend's was a Marlin uh, lever action. Really cool. No idea. They, the police think that they, somebody just lost their, uh, t or inherited their grandfather's guns and didn't know what to do with it, didn't want to get their license, so they just dumped it. But uh, that was one of our coolest finds. And so that's what keeps us keep going, is that we might find some more interesting things. And so when, when are you due to go back out onto the seas, uh, fishing for, yeah, whatever you, whatever you can find? We do, this, we do this every single week. We, uh, we put a show out on YouTube every Saturday morning, Eastern Standard Time, uh, at 11 a.m. So uh, You're going to get a quite a few new followers. <laughs> hey, you know what? That'd be awesome. I, I mean, you know... Maybe not. Maybe they'll see me and go, oh my god, what is wrong with that guy? He's filthy. He looks dirty. I'm usually This animal. is Brad on holiday. <laughs> yeah, this is, Brad on, this is Brad at 51. Let's just be honest. You know, it's not my, like, skinny Brad. I've been skinny Brad. I've, I've had skinny Brad, but now I'm COVID Brad. I'm just imagining you one, one day out, kind of isolated uh, on the seas, and you sort of yeah. slowly start to pull up. Nemesis is oh, no. slowly rises from the sea. <laughs> oh wait, in the remake he can't swim. Yeah. What? <laughs> Good point. He can't. Nemesis can't swim. No. No. <laughs> but is he like? But is he one of those? Is he? Can he walk on the ocean floor? Probably. Is he just one of those no, he just people? he just there like freaking like a doggy paddling. But I can't swim. Because <laughs> I feel like I feel like Nemesis is sort of like a version of Jason. Am I right? Like he's like. He's the slasher killer. He's Jason. And he can't stop. I like him. that analogy, he yeah. He doesn't die, right? So, um, he's got to be Jason. Put a hockey mask on Nemesis. See what he looks like. We do have a question. Um, Jerry's asking, do you have any t-shirts of Sludge Pirates? Any merchandise? Uh, no merch yet, uh, because we're slow at that. Um, but no merch, but we do have plans. We've got our logos and all that stuff. And... Absolutely be putting uh, some t-shirts together first, probably, some hat. Um, uh, definitely. So, uh, yeah, if Excellent. you're interested in those, stay tuned, stickers, everything. We'll try to do it all. Yeah, he's only asking because he wants to design them for you. Be careful because he's tried to design some for Crimson Head and I'll keep this. I mean, no one's listening. I'll, I'll keep this quiet. But between, I, 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 just between us seven, don't don't tell Jerry this, but they're absolute crap, the ones he designed for us. Wow. I like them. I like his designs. <laughs> this will be but, uh, to Jerry. What I think I need, though, <laughs> is a T-shirt that says I am Brad Vickers. Right? Well, don't get Jerry to do it. No, Ooh. Okay. Jerry's not going to be called now. Now you've ruined Jerry's no. possibilities, chances. How dare you ruin Jerry's name, GT? <laughs> now I don't have a merchandise question for you. Are you disappointed no. that there's no official Brad merchandise? Uh, um, I mean, look, it was 22 years ago. Uh, I literally think everyone thought I was dead, right? And so I, I don't, and, and not only that, but like you know, Capcom is is trying to promote their their latest games, right? And they, they don't really want people to start even think about Brad Vickers, my guess, because Brad Vickers is dead. He was just in the remake. Yeah, we killed him again. But, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that they're aware that Brad has got a following, but I don't, I don't think they're doing anything about it. They don't, they, Capcom certainly doesn't know that I'm even remotely involved in the, in the fans right now at all. Like, you know, they're not, probably not even aware I'm doing this. Um, but... I, I would love uh, here we go. some official, like an official poster or something that I can autograph for everyone, right? So something like that would be cool. If Capcom would get on that, then I'd be happy to sign autographs. For everybody. Oh, uh, now he has a rocket launcher! <laughs> that's gets... that's moment right there where him coming through the window has scared everybody <laughs> since the game came out. 
I That's literally amazing. just went, here we go. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> like, did I give him that rocket launcher? Maybe. Nah. Oh, he could have stole it from the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gone in my helicopter. Ah! Yep, there he is. Evan, what were your favorite type of video games that you were playing? Um, you know, when you tra when you traded in your Atari Jaguar for the PlayStation One, were you straight onto the, the the survival horror and the Resident Evil games? Other other sort of games that you were into? Oh no, I am I am I'm a I'm a Gemini. I don't know if anyone is a Gemini out there, but I'm a true Gemini in the sense I don't I don't have any one like. I like everything. I like to I like to play absolutely everything at least once. Okay. Um, I grew up on arcade games, right? You know, um, oh, we were Kong, talking about Kong this, well, we? Dragon's Lair. Invaders were my first. Uh, I love Joust. I love Asteroids. I love um, I love all Pac-Man. All those, all those Asteroids. Oh my god, that was yeah, the yeah. first. That was the first arcade game. I couldn't even see. Almost, I was so small. I had to like tiptoes into the yeah to see yeah. the screen. Played so Asteroids. many games. Wow. I can't even tell you what the. They, they are anymore like I, you you could probably go through a catalog of games and ask me if i played them and i would be like yep 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 probably because is it, is it dragon's lair what was the game we were talking about on our yeah, discord dragon's called? lair dragon's yeah. lair yeah that was uh, yeah. that was that was a, a kind of a more spectacle thing because we didn't nobody could understand how you could play cartoons that that yeah. was a whole like sort of like people were confused for a bit we just didn't know what was going on and uh, uh, Don Bluth's uh, artwork was was spectacular. Yes. And, and Dirk the Daring, he's he, he was so <laughs> so so iconic and so fun. Um, I I I love Dirk. He's my he's my boy. I mean, I was awful at that game, but you were you were right to point out during our conversation that, that one thing I really sort of felt to appreciate at the time was that it, it's effectively a game of memory, isn't it? Yeah, it's a memory game. Yeah. So it's just memorizing the moves uh, and also at the right times because. People, you know, they have, they did penalize you for your um, reflexes not, not um, being at the right moment. It was very unforgiving, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, the moves never changed. So it was just more about a memory game and how much mm. you can retain. And, uh, and they, they knew that you couldn't retain everything, and so you'd keep pumping in those quarters. And, and just, to, just of, yeah, And that, that wasn't just like, that was the first game that was 50 cents, by the way. Right? When we all came across that, it was like, 50 What the? <laughs> 50 cents right and, my, and went back then too in the arcades like if you went and got your quarters it was from a guy that was sitting up in a tall booth with a cigar in his mouth and i'd be like <laughs> putting like, a five dollar bill scared with just some quarters and he'd be like a smash on the counter and you have to just take them off Terrifying. hey kid you want some quarters yes yeah. sir no, he was terrified. He lives in this neighborhood. I've seen him, and I'm still scared of him. <laughs> <laughs> and the quarter, the quarter guy at the arcade. Um, but I've played, I've played everything. No genre is my favorite. Uh, okay. Necessarily, I play everything. VR, everything. Doesn't matter. I haven't played the VR Resident Evil 7, though, because I heard it was really scary. It's oh, it's terrifying. terrifying. Yeah. I'm not, really, I'm not good with terrifying. And you gotta be careful too, because a lot of people get motion sickness from it. I, got I do. Yeah. yeah. I'm good with motion sickness. I think it's because I started games at the very beginning, uh, so the start mm. of time, or I'm just equipped with the with the ability. But yeah, I, like uh, anytime anyone played games in 3D games, they couldn't handle it, even on the PlayStation One. Uh, I had a concussion, so ever since then, my I, I, it's been bad for me. <laughs> okay. Well, like the first. I mean, the thing is, is that I think they've kind of sort of figured out how to change some of those things, those maybe frame rates to slow things down for us so we don't get so sick. Right. But I remember uh, Wipeout on the PlayStation 1 made my stomach move. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Move. That's a fast game. You know, when yeah. you're just like going over that hill and it just felt so natural that if your brain actually went through the, the mechanics of it in your own belly, it was amazing. Like, I like games that make me sick. <laughs> did, Batgirl, have you played the VR of RE7, did you say? Yes. Wow. You say it's scary, though. Right? Marguerite is terrifying. Yes, I was thinking Stars Tyrant, one of our friends from another podcast, the Resident Evil podcast. Stars Tyrant did a stream, and I can recall particularly the Marguerite battle in VR looked absolutely terrifying. She's terrifying. Well, I, won't be I won't be running towards that. Carlos! Play other, other VR games. Oh! Is that Carlos? Yes. He's fine self. He's running from me. Get back here! 
Well, he's a ladies' man. He's not running away from you. I think you. he's. he's I think he's ashamed. he's ashamed. He's ashamed that he took Brad's. He took Brad's role as Jill's partner. Well, you know what? I think again, like I said, it, it may have been a shame, but I, we, you know, now, now that Brad has died like that, somebody else said to me, one other um, of the of um, somebody on Twitter said that it, it relieves, or is it maybe it was you know, to you, George? It, you said where uh, it his character, my character's death, leaves it so open to interpret, like you can, anyone can write a story about Brad's life because yeah, so absolutely. little of that was done about him that it leaves it open for any kind of fantasy writer or anybody, any other writer who wants to do something about Brad because there's, there's not so much concrete lore. And so, you, could, you know, he's kind of open that way. Right? Yep. It's still upsetting that I died, sure, but... Um, but everyone really knows who I am, don't they? That's the thing about a lot of these stars' characters. We do have a lot of background information. There's a character, another star's um, member, um, Richard Aitken, and he has an act of self-sacrifice during one of the games, Evan. And there's like this little fact that we know behind the scenes that he didn't stick up for his sister. And uh, when she, I think she may have even been killed during the mugging, and he always felt that he wasn't there to protect her. So you kind of get this self-sacrifice that he enacts during the game uh, to kind of sort of from make up for that you know that past uh, in that you know in action that he felt was responsible for his sister's uh, death uh but we don't get a lot of that with brad in terms of kind of was there any ptsd you know what you know what was causing you know i mean i'm sure fans in the chat will have their own explanation as to what was going on because we we certainly didn't get the impression that brad was effectively abandoning his friends um you know during the scenes that we see in the original resident evil and in the remake yeah. i mean what have you had your own thoughts evan on 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 that helicopter scene uh, uh, well i think i mean everyone's got a theory about it and all that stuff i i think it's um you know it was just a, a tool really in a way for the script to move forward it, you you kind of needed brad to take off in order for the people to be trapped in the situation that they're trapped in Wait, kind of like just it, for a script something. reason it had to happen right? I know. brad had to abandon his friends but in in all reality um crazy. old chicken heart did the right thing what? you know because i guess if you're in the uh military i guess and all that stuff i'm assuming but a helicopter is an asset and and you don't want to lose that uh, because it is such a useful useful tool so i imagine that brad was probably thinking about the helicopter um, because that's his job and to take the helicopter out of a dangerous situation was, was the paramount idea for him in case there was to be rescuing later in case there was anything plus if he's dead the helicopter's now just sitting on the field um instead of being uh, useful here to and so i think civilians. he i think it was just more of like a trust me, quick decision everyone can say it was like a you know cowardly decision but i think it was a more of a um, just sort of an experience decision oh, mm. yeah it is because it makes sense because I, if i remember right if I, my dad was in the military during vietnam if the, if the area is too dangerous the helicopter pilot will not land they will fly off and wait a right. bit of time before coming right. back so when he did come back to get to the others they were gone so yeah. he saw the mansion in the distance so he spent his, the good few hours just circling looking for them because yeah. the radios were acting up yeah and if he was such a you know chicken abandoner would he be would he be risking his own life burning up that fuel i don't know i don't he know meant, he stayed, he stayed to the last know. possible moment he stayed there to the last possible moment he could there's also and then, I, another key fact that a lot of people can probably forget. Yeah. Wesker had everything planned out. Wesker probably gave him the order to circle back. Hmm. That's yeah. a good point. I never thought of that back though. Yeah. Yeah, because he probably thought the the rest of the team would have been killed, and w Brad would be the one evacuating him. Yes. Gotcha. Well, then, then you know, I, I guess there's some other people who have theories that Brad is um was some kind of like double d duplicity spy, like he was a. I don't he was think he was a spy. I think he was led, stirred wrong by his uh, leader. Yeah. Well, that's the other opinion that more people like better, is that yeah. he was he was uh, yeah. duped himself. He was tricked himself. Get out he of would my way. He would never do that. You know what I mean? Oh. Listen, 
Bro. I want to mention something. We'll get this. We'll get this information to you, Evan. Uh, distant yeah. memories in the chat oh, yeah. it is very right, very, very insightful, well remembered. Uh, distant memories. Uh, I feel remiss. I should have remembered this myself. That, uh, as you know, um, Evan, being a nerd, that various different ports of the same game, you know, uh, um, are released across different various consoles. And on the N64 version of Resident Evil 2, yeah. it comes with. Uh, additional files that you don't get in the PlayStation version of, of RE2 and the Dreamcast uh, called X files there I think there's only about five or six and one of the files is there's a there's a Brad file where he does talk about a bit of his background biography so we'll uh, we'll send you a link to that sure, uh, yeah, thank yeah. you distant memories in fact I'm sure Oracle is probably on that now and there'll be a, a link <laughs> in the stream to that uh, but yeah um, but still very little information is known about Brad and so it's just great that that you know we can connect with the character through through you his you know his his original actor from from this game so thank you Evan for you know spending this this personal time with us it it really no is an honor thank you yeah um does that mean we're ending our stream soon maybe eh? well we 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 are uh, oracle have you oracle did pinch the keys to the helicopter we're we're going to try and keep you here as long as we possibly can but uh yeah uh, you let us know when you need to take off. Well, and, no, uh, I know. I said I I would like to be almost done in ten minutes. Um, that can be twenty minutes. Because I don't really have to kind. leave till four thirty. Um, I got a job working at the front door, temporary, just uh, because my friend is my next door neighbor. Ooh. She runs a review cinema here in Toronto, second run theater that was built in 1912. Uh, okay. It's a really cool old little tiny theater. And I get to check everyone's vaccine passport. Show me the passports! <laughs> and you're loud, yeah. Are you going to wear your star's uniform? That like extra authority? Yeah, no, I just, for sure. Ah, oh, shit. I've got a flight jacket here, right? <laughs> wear my flight jacket to work today. And, uh, just get this all Brad Vickers stuff ready to go. Right? Like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I was born to be, I was born for this part <laughs> to be Brad Vickers. Rico, thank not... you. No, 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 no. Sorry, Evan. We had a question from Rico, but again, Rico Beres, thank you for um, supporting us and being in the stream and for asking the question. Uh, but again, it relates to whether uh, Evan, you had met any of your fellow cast members, but unfortunately, no. Um, and he mentions Tony Rosato as well, but I don't think you got to meet any of your. Uh, cast members did you oh, and, uh, you know i wonder if it's because they were all just jealous and they didn't want you know someone a little young kid does anybody have young young pictures of me devastating they didn't want me to be near them at all <laughs> just so good looking and uh arrogant so they'd probably just invite me to the party <laughs> oh, that's um, question from Golden Heart Evan. I don't yes. know how closely oh, yeah. you've stayed with the series, and you know you, we mentioned the remake of three, but um, if you have stayed with the series a, a little bit, what's your feeling on the direction that Capcom have taken the series? Ooh, that's tough for me because I think I stopped at uh, five. Um, okay, ah, interesting. So you played five. I ch I attempted to play five, <laughs> and. <laughs> It was, it was, uh, it was just such a. Uh, I, why did I feel like it was such a departure? All I remember is uh, being in a, a certain yes. part of the room. Was it not? Was it not? Was it not first person? I, I well, no. I'm not going to be disparaging about the so, game at all. It wasn't first person, but it was a huge departure in terms of yeah. the pace and the focus on combat. I remember getting surrounded by zombies and I, I killed and I couldn't kill them and it was scary. <laughs> and then, um, I, I think I just, I think I didn't like the the mechanics or the engine, but we didn't really. It wasn't like a, a, a total divergence from four, right? Like it was kind of the same engine as four, wasn't it? Just a little bit more polished. Yeah. Like on the, it was on the PS3, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it went even further in that direction of being bombarded by multiple enemies and very much a reliance on on weapons as opposed to yeah. kind of a more a slow, more survival horror paced. Game. Yeah, that's what I felt. I felt that it was more action paced. Um, and uh, I, I think I tried it playing it, but I just, I never picked it back up. And, and you know, it's weird because I, I kept all my games that I bought for the PS3 and whatnot, but there's some games that are definitely missing from my catalogs. I don't know where they went, but probably in some moves, lost a couple. I don't have my original Resident Evil uh, 3 PlayStation 1 disc. I don't have that anymore. 
I just have Resident Evil 3 on the PS3. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> Someone stole it, I guess. I don't know. Mine is on the... in my display case right next to my Jill Valentine statue. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything. I don't have any weird Resident Evil anything. Because again, I, I when I did the gig, it was at the time it was like a one-off gig. I didn't call, get a call back because I was dead, and um, and I didn't think too much about it. I mean, being a big video game person, I, I loved it for when it when I was in it, and you know it was exciting to tell the friends that I actually cared that I was in the game. Or, and, but I didn't hear anything because the internet really wasn't at the same place, right? So it wasn't all communication from fans or people who really liked like my performance i had no idea until basically this year You're one of the survivors and with the remake everybody's starting to talk I more about brad so the there's that following too oh cool well but the, you know that's that hey, brad and that's that actor and um he, he did a good job and um stars. you know i hope they I hope they are yeah, fans of his too um of course you know if they want to hey, jump on board and be my fan just because i'm you know, the original OG Brad, then cool. I, I'd take their fandom, fandom too. I, I treat them as friends. You're all friends to me. I don't like, oh, it's not, you don't have to be fans. Be friends. Oh, that, They're coming. that just Get reminds ready. me of, the, uh, uh, of how fire. the OG Leon referred fire. to the Resident Evil community because he also together. called them um, his Calm friends. Down. That's cool. Them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Everything is gonna be I'm, okay. I'm not a huge big time actor, right? So I don't, I don't have like, I mean, in terms of fans, I think Resident Evil are the only fans I, <laughs> I have. Oh no, and, and the Sludge Pirates. We have, we have fans now so on Jill, Sludge Pirates. Did you decide to help us? Evan, distant memories in the chat like says that this uh, that you are a blessing to have in this community. This community is absolutely blessed to have you in it. Thank you. Thank you. He's, he, uh, is it a is it is it a he he him? Distant memories, mate. I don't know. I think he, yeah, I think he, he is a he distant memories, yes, because he's a, part of, uh, a very well known member of the community. He writes, um, does videos, uh, and yes, yes, I've been, I'm very, um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure so I, he's always been very kind. And, uh, yes, I'm, I, I appreciate that so much. It really, uh, makes me feel like I want to be here. I've been on a podcast with distant memories, and he knows his stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, clearly. I, I don't Once know myself there, as much, even though I, I am, you know, out. a really decent video game player. I'm no, you know, um, like I can't, I'm not good at every game, how about that? So, I respect the everyone's talents. I don't right, I just fair. shared the... Oh, go ahead, sorry. So no choice, but you I was just going to very quickly ask Evan, I don't know if it's fair to ask this and put you on the spot, but have you had much time with the remake? Have you played the remake of Resident Evil? No, not, not at all. No. That works for um, me. And I think that's just because... Sir. Okay, people. Uh, Let's get moving. I think maybe because, maybe because uh, 5 turned me off right, about, the, about that. Yes. Um, and and the remake looked, looked beautiful, like visually looked beautiful and all that stuff. Uh, I just didn't um, find the time and reason to purchase it and um you know I, I i as much as i really respect and appreciate the other performer in the game you know if i was to be honest i was like what did they call me <laughs> they didn't call me i could have been brad again you know so there's that small part of it and maybe i didn't play it because i was um just sort of like attached to the og experience but i will play it i will try it out looks great even though I know those people don't, a lot of people think it's too short. And it's well, well, I love he's wondering it. it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go on, Oracle. Go on, Oracle. Sorry. I was about to say, if they ever bring back Outbreak, adding Brian would be a good addition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did out Outbreak happen before I died? Yeah. yeah it was cool. happening around this exact same time, but since we don't know what Brad was doing during this entire time of the Outbreak, the, yeah. the video game Outbreak, basically your survivors during the outbreak of Raccoon City, we could have Brad and expand on his story of how he was surviving the Raccoon City and dealing with Nemesis. Yeah, I mean, again, the character's wide open because there was so little kind of done, done with him. It, it, it's amazing to me that people are so attached to Brad in, in general because I do think that he, he didn't quite get too much screen time to become endeared to people and when he died that i didn't think that people would be that upset like that attached 
to his death. Um, forgetting that he's in the one and two, I guess. The, the, you know. Do you think some of that has to do with the, the, the brutality of that death? Uh, I think it's more like the performance. Yeah, I just think I think what happens is the brutality of the death. I think if you if you if they had given Brad any kind of scenes or stuff that endeared the audience uh, more to, more to him, that when he got killed, it would have been much more of an emotional situation for everyone. Um, so I do think that it would have been cool to see more of Brad in the one and two, but that wasn't that wasn't the the idea. And I'm happy that people still became attached to Brad when he, when he got killed and they felt bad about his death. So it still kind of worked. Yeah. You know, but uh, I definitely would have liked to have been involved a bit more. It would have been awesome. Everything now, okay? speaking back. Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard, <laughs> cause, cause, uh, I heard like, this nemesis roar coming from that girl's mic. Oh. Okay, 20, um. 20 more minutes. 20 more minutes. Uh, speaking about the that EX file from Resident Evil 2, I shared it in the Discord if you want to read it real quick. It's a very short file. Yeah, what is it? Where am I looking now? In the chat, in the Discord. Okay, okay. Brad's note? Oh, file. Number 10. Okay. No! Oh, this is me. I'm saying yep. this. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. You're trying to get a performance out of me here. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> uh -huh. Nice one. Nice move. I like it. I'm not gonna, we'll read it as Brad because I tell you what, I, I don't know how Brad talks normally. Like I don't know it's conversation voice. I have no idea what he sounds maybe, like. Maybe, maybe sound it's something like that me. we can do behind the scenes with you one day, um, Evan, sure. and uh, no. that could be something we could release to the community. You never know. Yeah, because no would have to be like, no, no, or like, no, or no. See. I I don't know because I need those two Japanese guys <laughs> to tell me what to do. <laughs> no. No. Is that monster. Oracle will direct you. Is that monster in the black suit again? No, I say I can't do it. I'm just fucking around with you. <laughs> so why does that thing keep chasing me? What did I do? This must be someone's sick idea of a joke. <laughs> Wait, what? What does that even mean? <laughs> what is it? It's that monster in the black suit again. Why does that thing keep chasing me? Good question, right? What did I do? Oh, no. Well, that would have to be how I say it, right? Well, what did I do? Anyway, <laughs> this must be like, this must be someone's sick idea of a joke. Now that part is very strange. That is some weird script writing. Well, it's interesting you say that because there is always these sort of lost in translation mistranslations between the Japanese and the English. Um, back in that day, the Japanese would have been written first and then translated into English. And with the localization, we do often get a lot of errors uh, in the English versions. So that could very much come from the original Japanese could have been yeah. relying something quite yeah. different. But I mean, like, but, but why would it be a sick joke that a monster has been sent to kill me? Why is it a sick joke? <laughs> it's it's sick joke. It's just a joke. Relax. You don't have a sense of humor, Brad. Hey, eh? you don't have a sense of humor. It's just a joke. We're trying to kill you. That's what I, I think that could be definitely someone relying on a literal translation of the Japanese, perhaps that you know needs to be amended more for a Western ear. I think. Oh, but he says if I if I knew things were going to end up like this, I would have left the Stars team a long time ago. It won't, but whining won't help him now. Whining won't help me now. I know I'm finished. Oh, he knows he's doomed. And he says his hometown. Is that where... Okay, that's where he knows he's from Delusia. Oh, and I like flowers. I didn't know I liked flowers. I bet the flowers are in bloom. If I could only see them once more before I die? <laughs> oh... Wait a second. I shouldn't be laughing. Sorry. No, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Listen. Brad is a helicopter pilot, but he's also a softie. Yeah. Well, what's the Japanese... He's got daffodils what's the Japanese next to him. Flower, what's the Japanese flower arrangement art? What's that called? Uh... Just, someone Google it. Japanese origami is with the paper, isn't it? I don't know what flowers is. Yeah, no, there's a special name for uh, Japanese okay. flower arrangement, I think. Uh, anyway, but uh, it's interesting to know that Brad... Uh, and this off time is a florist. A florist. Florist? Like, I make. Mean, Kibana? Thank Maybe you. that's what yeah. he flew off during RE1 events. He'd forgotten to water the plants. He quickly waters them and comes back again. 
Yeah, well, you know, where do you think the herbs come from, man? Oh, now, we, now oh, that's now slick. We, now we're getting to the bottom of this. It's yeah, Brad. Yeah. Brad is the herb man. This is the he takes his water. helicopter and spreads yeah. the seeds. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you disappeared, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, the RPD. <laughs> uh, is that where Brad now is currently languishing in a cell? Well, were you busted? Well, there would be flowers in my cell. Let's just say that. Right? We all know that now. Now I. Know, now we know that I like flowers. A lot. Harry saying Brad was the supplier. <laughs> like, I want to see flowers before I die? Like, I'm pretty sure... I mean, as Evan, I don't want to see flowers just before I die. That's not the thing I want to see. You know what I'm saying? But Brad, if Brad wants to see flowers... Well, okay, what do you think uh, Brad's favorite flower is? that be? Oh, no, I'm trying to think of something that's a good pun with uh, things that have happened in the past. We'll have to come back to you on that one. But uh, I wonder if that, again, is kind of speaking to Bat Brad, you know, maybe being, you know, very sensitive. And again, he's sort of his, his emotions and his sensitivities kind of got the better of him. Yeah, flowers don't like talk back. Flowers don't insult you. Flowers don't hurt you. Flowers don't hit you. Right? Flowers just give you a nice smell in your nose. I mean, not all flowers, let's be, let me know that. There's some flowers out there that stink. I'm pretty pleased, actually, that we've had a lot of quiet from Oracle's end, Evan, because I was going to say before, I forgot to mention it, actually, earlier, that if you heard the sounds of chickens, chicken noises coming from Aaron's microphone, uh, coming no. from the Oracle Dra no. Dragon's microphone, it, it, it's not us being cheeky. They're, they're not artificial sounds. Oracle is where she is, is surrounded by chickens in Pennsylvania. Why are you surrounded by chickens? Because we have chickens, and chickens are nice. The lead chicken's named Nugget. Nugget. That's all. Nugget. Well, so you live on a farm? Kind of a farmish thing. <laughs> yeah, well, in the middle of the woods. <laughs> like, uh, unless you're living somewhere where you're in your backyard, you could just have chickens. Because some people won't do that. That's a nice double headshot. Yeah. That was very nice, Ooh. yeah. I did oh, enjoy yeah. that. <laughs> nice one, back girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you uh, do you farm them to eat, or just name them? It's for the eggs. It's the eggs. Yeah. Okay. That's delicious. The Oracle's brother eats all the eggs, though. We oh, need to pretty much. This out. Yeah, egg stealer. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Any more questions in the chat? You're doing yeah. very very well, back girl. Yeah, and, chat, um, do you have any more questions for old Brad before I have to go? I mean, I'm not. Well, um, I um, it won't. When you leave the Crimson yeah. Head Mansion, it's not yeah. obviously leaving the community because I know that you're going to be doing other things with other fan sites and other fan channels. So, um, I'm just going to be doing a few interviews, but to be honest, I don't really have a lot of streams lined up uh, for all that stuff. I, I did get myself uh, some equipment to, in order to maybe do some streaming. Maybe. Oh. Well, if you need a moderator, I can help with that. She, well, really I, don't even, I don't even know what that is, but that's great. A moderator just helps <laughs> me moderate things. I right? help. I keep make. I make sure the chat stays in line. Right, so yes. Just don't, like it's just not. If, chicken, if they chicken, mention chicken, the C chicken, word, yeah. yeah if the, the the chicken no. word, if they say anything about chicken hearts, then Oracle just kicks them out of the chat. Yeah. No. Just <laughs> send send nemesis. <laughs> so Oracle will put a link in the chat, Evan. You've got your own Twitch channel, I believe. And no, if do and when Twitch, but it's not like I'm not streaming yet. I'm not you know what I mean? Like um But maybe it's, one day. It's a one day kind of idea, you know. I, it'd be fun to maybe I like see here's the thing. We all like the thing everyone's laughing about people playing Twitch and all that stuff, and like people watching other people play video games. But you know, when when I was growing up there wasn't the internet for, for playing video games at all. And so you would play with your friends on the couch beside you. And you'd be playing with them right here. And sometimes you'd be playing a game like Resident Evil. And there was only one controller for that game. So your friend is just watching you. Yes. And your friend doesn't care because your friend is, you know, just drinking beer beside you or whatever it was. <laughs> not that young, probably not drinking beer. But um, you were just hanging out. You're just hanging out and sharing each other's presence. And I think Twitch just does that. I think it kind of provides, um, you know, uh, a narcissist with people to watch them. 
I had the wrong sort of friends because I was playing Space Invaders back in the 80s and I was taking too long and my friend sat next to me in the end got so pissed off that I, like, I hadn't died. He literally just reached across and turned it off. And I went, man. Oh my god, I forgot mm. this happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just so that's just the thing. So I think Twitch is, is, a, is, a, is just a way for people to hang out together uh, who enjoy the same games and not everybody likes to play the games as much as they like to just sit there and watch because they're actually there with their friend. They're hanging out with their friend, and that's what's important to them. And I think any streamer becomes people's friends, right? And the people that are in the chat become your friends. And yeah, well, Chaotic Claire agrees with you. Uh, she says, I miss couch, I like that term, I miss couch co-op. Online gaming is nice, but couch co-op was something else. Couch, Absolutely, couch, Chaotic yeah. Claire. Couch co-op is the best, or even, well, I mean, it's not even couch co-op, oh, couch so versus. Awesome. You know, like you're playing the old Mario Brothers and all that. Anyway, there's a lot of games that are amazing. Oh, there's the damn crows! <laughs> I'm just anyway. glad they didn't take down your helicopter. Yeah, they would, um, all they need to do is they just pluck me out of the window and then they, that's it. I'm a, One thing for the future, maybe you can stream from your channel, Evan, one okay. day. I may be wrong, but I'm sure there is a, not necessarily a mod, but there, uh, there's a fan-made um, project of a Resident Evil game where Brad stars as the main protagonist. Does anyone in the chat know what uh, I'm talking about? Uh, I'm the main the protagonist? I'm sure, yeah, where Brad is I've the main seen, character. I've seen, I think I have seen. And it's modeled, it, it's sort of like an RE, it's a mod on RE2, you know, on these these original games on RE2, RE3. I've seen Brad in uh, Grand Theft Auto. Someone made, <laughs> someone, made my, someone made my character in Grand Theft Auto. I think it was uh, Jake, if he's there. Uh, I think he showed me the, his okay. models on, on Grand Theft Auto, and I was like, yeah, cool. Brad Vickers <laughs> and, the, and Chris Redfield are now in, in Grand Theft Auto. Pretty, pretty awesome. He just he drive off in his car. He I just mean, drives off, Brad, in the, just, the sunset. I just, want, Never... I just want to get the Brad Vickers model in Grand Theft Auto and go fly a helicopter. Is that, <laughs> yes. is that too much to ask? I hate this thing. Oh, there it is. Yeah, those things are nasty. Yeah. Oh, what are those things again? Is that a... Brain suckers. Brain sucker. Okay. That was a nice dodge. Wow. And an instant Killed. shot. Killed with a Z. Oh, no, yeah. You're doing very well back there. I mean, I'm, I just, I think this shows, you know, with this fan remake that no! sometimes, you know, as long as the, the playability Don't is there and the atmosphere way. is there, the sound design, everything is there, and it holds up so well as it, Kill all of that me. does with this, this original game. I now that it's been remastered in HD, you, you don't need a remake. You know, it always makes the remake feel redundant. Really? Uh, but again, like I said, they've changed a few things in that remake, and uh, kudos for those people who enjoy that, that remake. I mean, the graphics are gorgeous. There's been, a, there's been an update in that respect, right? But, you know, some, sometimes old games are just, they're just hard to take out of your heart. Yeah. You know, so you're just attached to your first experience, like a, like a little baby chicken bonding to its mother. Why? I don't know, Rika. I always call them brain suckers. But the, the, and the plague crawlers as well. They all look. They do look very similar. Carlos. I th I think they may have been a drain demos, but I know that 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 yeah, that because they do look very very similar with the is it the the plague crawlers as well. And they combine them together in the remake. Yeah. I don't yes. Know. I don't know, man. I always called them the brain suckers, and I got so used to calling them brain suckers that I started calling liquors brain suckers as a kid. All right. So what's the what's the overall consensus of what game of Resident Evil Past Four should I play? You know, should I experience that everyone thinks is probably the best experience? I mean, everyone. Oracle crazy. and Batgirl will have their choices, and uh, we'll throw that out there for the chat as well. Chat, everyone in chat and lurkers as well. What do you think? I'm going to very quickly answer with mine, saying, particularly if you felt that Resident Evil Five wasn't so much your thing, Evan, and I kind of found that. You know, that kind of cha increased change of direction, uh, building on four, kind of moving towards that that uh, more action based. Uh, you know, action-orientated type of game. Yeah. Um, 
Resident Evil 7, which very much goes back to the survival horror. You've also got Revelations 2, Resident Evil Revelations 2, which is like a, a side game, like an expanded universe game. But if you wanted to st stay along the main timeline, then it's a first person game, but very much in the kind of the, the, the feel and the atmosphere of the fixed camera angles and the classic era. Very much survival horror, very much a slow pace, very much atmosphere and uh building on very kind of tense slow paced uh survival scares okay, great you know and i've got the vr so i might as well get really scared a lot of people are also suggesting to play the remake hey. of resident evil remake the first one first one yeah people really like that one yeah and I know you've been chatting and to Joe, you... who's on our team. Joe uh, White, of course, voices Chris Redfield in that game, in the remake of the original. But yeah, absolutely, that's that's your classic survival horror game. Okay, well, if I do play that, then that's when I'll play, I'll play Joe. <laughs> uh, too bad he couldn't make it today. I, yeah, I did chat with him today briefly, just looking for you on. Uh, and yeah, he couldn't make it. He said he had his hands full. That's too bad. Joe, if you're watching, it's okay. We'll, we'll connect another time. Eh? Absolutely, it'll be great to get you and Joe together on a, a stream. Yeah, no, unfortunately, Joe, Joe has a, quite a bad family illness that he's been dealing with for some time now and has, has missed quite a few of our streams and will hopefully be with us um, in October, but certainly not for the next week or two. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's sorely missed by us all and we have been passing on all your well wishes to, to Joe and his family. Thank you, everyone. Uh, but that would be great, Evan, if we could get you and Joe perhaps on a remake stream uh, together. Because as you know, although not voiced by yourself, but Brad does feature in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in one, two, the first one? Oh, yeah. I guess he does. Yeah. yeah. An another game you could try playing is Code Veronica. Code Veronica? Okay. Uh, you know, clear, is that a little Claire action? Yep. Nice. Okay. Quite clear. That's, that's that originally came out on the Dreamcast, but you can get an HD remastered version of that on the PS3 and Xbox 360. On the PS3, even? Yep. Okay, cool. I mean, I still have my PS3. I got my PS3, PS4, PS1, PS2. It's also on the PS4. And on the PS4, too? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. I'll just get it for that. Oh, can you download that? Oh, of course, on PSN, can't you? You can download it. Yeah, can't you? because I bought it on the PS4, I transferred it over to the 5, so... Mm. And is that the it. HD and is that the MT framework remastered version or the original that I know that you and Rico are more fans? No, that's the, the remaster. Oh cool. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a fan of the original original, like um Dreamcast one. <laughs> yes. Oh I have a Dreamcast too. Oh. Nice. Yeah, I don't know how I inherited it. Someone sold it to me for twenty five bucks. <laughs> I'll buy it. I don't think I got many games. I think, well, it's arguable between the GameCube and the Dreamcast um, which console these games, these original games, look best on 2 and 3. If you're not playing the this HD remastered version on a PC, uh, I, I love these on GameCube, but I know some would argue that they look, look even better on a, uh, on a Dreamcast. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Guys, we have three minutes left. Is, yeah, uh, wow. Well, get listen, get your questions, and if you've got any final questions, Evan, it's been fantastic questions. to share this time with you. Thank you so much. You know what? Thank you so much um, for exposing my me being alive, everybody. <laughs> and we hope we um, can um, have play a hand in some fans following your um, your YouTube channel, where you fish for all sorts of things, oh, uh, yeah. but not necessarily fish, of course. Uh, magnet fishing. Yeah, you know, but like I'm okay to keep the two things separate too. You know, if you don't want to <laughs> watch the old guy pull things out of the water, then don't watch that. Um, but it is, <laughs> you know, it is can be funny sometimes what we what we come up with and what we find. Um, I, and I, I'm just here to be with the fans here and be part of the Resident Evil community as much as I can. Um, obviously, I'd like to get my regular acting always in gear and i'd like to get gigs as well so it's not but i mean i would love to do anything in resident evil you know just call me capcom just call me and of course i would fans, love a game with you and joe that would be awesome yeah. oh wow. sure yeah if we can get that done why not yeah well you guys still like my voice i mean that's yes nice. very sweet very nice oh last question any new projects you're working on uh in terms of what voice or acting and anything uh, film, film, film and tv I'm booked on a gig. I have uh, just one day on a on a small TV, sh not a small TV show, an American TV show. I just don't know the 
I don't know. I didn't sign any non-disclosure, but um, I don't think it's out yet. So if I told you the name, it wouldn't matter. Um, and I don't know who it, I don't know who it's for because I'm really I'm I'm just not focused. What they did is they booked me, and they booked me um, a, basically about a month and a half ahead of time, which has not really happened to me ever. I've never been booked for this long. I'm shooting on, on October 18th, and I found out like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that I booked it. So. It's strange, but uh, so I'll be doing uh, a TV gig there, continuing with the YouTube th thing there. I do have a high-end professional agent, and uh, we are now coming out of the season where all the ad auditions are now going to start coming up. So we'll get a lot more auditions. Our union's about to go on strike. Our IATSE might go on strike, but if they don't, then we'll just keep keep working, and hopefully I'll get more auditions. And I am working my, my way back into voice as best I can. I'd like to be in more video games. Uh, Mocap would be okay with me, because um, I'm a bit of a mask actor anyway, so I know kind of body stuff and uh, and voice work. Just to, you know, like I said, get back into commercials, acting for for video games, be all, be all of it, all of it. Evan, distant memory says thank you, Evan, and this is sentiment I'm sure that that's um, matched throughout everyone in the chat that's been listening to and watching tonight. It's been an amazing gift to get back with you. Um, hope you return to acting in gaming and especially Resident Evil and of course um, Evan fans can keep up to date with your new projects and um, all stuff that you're doing on your through your Twitter because I know you've been active yeah, on I, Twitter. I mean, like, listen I'm not I'm no I'm not a master at social media so uh, it you know I'm on Twitter I'm just role playing on Twitter I'm just having a lot of fan with everyone there yeah and it's great you do have a lot of fun on Twitter they are they, they are great your posts they, they they're brilliant they're, they're works of, of, of yeah they're, they they sort of little stories aren't they little drama uh, things I just I don't know what what came over me I have no idea um, I, I just I just felt like it was the fun thing to do is not to take Brad too seriously and just make my own kind of idea of, of what you know I guess Brad would be in a sitcom <laughs> Maybe, you know. And now, um, since you have his file, you love flowers. Yeah. Now I love. Now I love flowers. Uh, like, yeah, we can. We can see. This yeah. is creepy and some kind of want, joke. More like, a, more like a braided flower tiara. I'm your, yeah, we can do that. I'm yeah. sure you're gonna have. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna have fun with that on on Twitter and with your posts. Soon. Well, yeah, for yeah, sure. But... It'll be the next thing I do. I'm gonna just just rant about flowers and, and everyone enjoy that. But thank you so much for everyone who does follow me on Twitter. Tell your friends. Um, I would like to be active in the community. Don't be afraid of talking to me. Uh, I also have uh, my Insta Instagram account that I'm trying to do there and maybe Facebook. I don't know. It's just more of connecting with everyone who appreciated my work 22 years ago. And for that, I humbly thank you. It's um, a real, <laughs> a real honor. And, um, and uh, I love you all. Thank you so much. Evan, thank you very, very much. Um, everyone in chat, thank you so much for being with us. Oracle Dragon, thank you, of course. Uh, and Batgirl, of course. I'll, I'll let you say goodbye as, as, uh, again, yet again. Uh, you've kind of been the MVP, you and Oracle, of uh, of the Crimson Head team. I've just sort of sit here kind of swooning over over the stars. Uh, but, but Oracle, you manage the chat so well. Um, Evan, Oracle's been dropping links to your YouTube at Sludge Pirates Listen, uh, I, and your Twitter I'm into the chat. I'm going to watch after. I'm going to watch after. I'm just going to see what you guys did. <laughs> And um, uh, you, you guys have a nice uh, professional uh, outfit here, and it, uh, you guys are very pleasant and nice, and I hope you go further with your crimson head. Please come back. Thank we you. want you back. <laughs> oh, I can come back. I can come back, but, you know, um, yeah, I don't know what the stipulations oh, are. Oh, cool. Did you, did you take copies of those helicopter keys? Yes, he can have them back. Okay, well, good. Cause, um... you, you made copies, though. You made copies. Before. Yep, can... yep, yep, yep. Okay. Uh, can I have them back then? Because uh, it's time to go. Evan, we'll say yeah. we're waving goodbye. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. Guys, um, a pleasure. See you soon, okay? <laughs> Don't forget your Jesus nuts. We'll um, talk soon. All right? All Take right. care, everyone. Bye. 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 Wow. Leaving with style. Leaving with style. <laughs>